Hello, Georgia clinicians. About three days ago, Hillary Richardson, manager of the American Occupational Therapy Association's Evidence-Based Practice Program, shared five new resources that I want clinicians to be aware of, and I want you to share these with others. I want to note that I found these while engaging in the AOTA's CommuneOT. If you haven't set up your account yet or you haven't engaged in this forum fully, I strongly encourage you to check it out. The purpose of this video is to support the great work the AOTA is doing in keeping its members and public informed. As Hillary notes in her post, practice-related COVID-19 decision guides are now available. The guides cover service delivery and professional issues in response to the COVID-19 pandemic and the challenge of rapidly changing practice needs. They're meant to support decision-making and assist practitioners and managers in developing setting-specific guidelines and overcoming barriers in order to provide the best possible care and maintain the health and safety of everyone. They are now available for home health, inpatient, outpatient, acute care, and telehealth. The home health, inpatient, and outpatient guides all follow the same format. Each are checklists. The checklist can assist the development of facility-specific algorithms and work plans during the pandemic. Each checklist walks through how individuals should consider staffing, patient care considerations, staying safe, and ethical considerations. The acute care guide is actually a decision guide organized by, into a chart and broken out by disease stages one through four. The clinical features you'll find patients experiencing in that stage and what therapeutic considerations clinicians should utilize during that stage. The acute care stage one, early symptoms, mild disease, hospitalization, and hospital administration. The symptoms include cough, fatigue, shortness of breath, fever, fear, and anxiety. During stage two, respiratory distress, which is a part of the moderate disease progression, includes hospitalization. So these symptoms include hypoxia, acute respiratory distress, the need for supplemental oxygen, supportive medical therapy, the experience of fear and anxiety. During stage three, respiratory failure it is the severe form of the disease. It requires intensive care unit placement. Symptoms will include acute respiratory failure, multiple organ failure, vasogenic shock, delirium, ICU-acquired weakness, vent, prone positioning needs, ECMO, sedation, paralytics, and vent weaning. During stage four, this is post-recovery. It's recovery from the severe disease. The patient will be discharged to general medical floor, post-acute rehab, and or a subacute rehabilitation facility. This will include post-intensive care syndrome, physical, cognitive, and psychological dysfunction, and post-traumatic stress disorder. I encourage everyone to follow the link below and to review the resources indicated in this chart. Finally, the AOTA set up a telehealth decision guide. The decision tree for how to implement telehealth in your practice highlights key documents, considerations, and payer information. The decision guide can be utilized when in any practice area and makes finding practice-specific information easy since multiple hyperlinks are embedded within the PDF. This is similar to the other chart for acute care. The Georgia Occupational Therapy Association would like to give a heartfelt thanks to the AOTA for creating and sharing these guides. The GOTA membership committee is currently conducting interviews with clinicians who are treating COVID-19 patients in their typical role or in newly assigned positions within their facility. We are in interviewing individuals regardless of their practice area, which state they practice in, or current employment status. If you're interested in being interviewed for our upcoming video, please contact info at gota.com. Thank you.